Hi everyone, it's Sue Plum here to share another scrapbook process video with you. Today's layout that I'm sharing is the latest episode for the Challenge Me, Challenge You series that I do with my dear friend Gwen Ruck. Now this month Gwen has challenged me with pastel colours and I have challenged Gwen with acrylic paint. Now I am not really surprised that Gwen has chosen pastel colours for me because this is not a area of the colour spectrum that I traditionally work in. Um, traditionally I like to work with bold bright colours and pastels is definitely taking me out of my comfort zone. I do find them more difficult to work with than those bold bright colours that I tend to gravitate towards. So for this layout I decided to pull out one of my hip kits from my stash um, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head which month exactly this was from, um, but I can tell you that it did have the Pink Fresh Studio, the Best Day collection in it, some of that, and there was also um, some Hip Kit Club exclusives from a collection called September Days as well in there. So there was two papery collections, um, some coordinating embellishments. I pulled out... You can see that chipboard sheet there, which was from um, crepe paper. It was from the confetti range. And I'll tell you my reasoning behind the other things that I pulled out as we go along. So that's the acrylic paint that I've pulled out to work with. It's a ceram coat one and the colour is hydrangea pink. It's a beautiful, beautiful pink. So I figured if I was going to go all out and do pastels that I better use a pink in there somewhere. So I was starting with this base sheet, this Pink Fresh Studio paper, which had that circle in the centre of it, and then it had that little sort of floral motif. Now, I don't know about you, but I often struggle with using these papers, and it's probably because I don't really like things that are too symmetrical or centred or perfect. But I thought for the sake of this challenge and pushing myself out of my comfort zone, I was definitely going to give it a go. So what I did first, uh, you would have seen, I glazed over it fairly quickly, but I pulled out a craft knife and I just cut around the edge of that floral cluster on the inside of the circle there. And the reason for that was knowing I was going to put my photo there, I didn't actually want to cover up part of the florals with my photo but by the same token I didn't want to cut out the whole thing and separate it entirely from this background sheet I wanted to use this background sheet exactly as it was so my reasoning there was just to use my craft knife to cut around the inner edge of that cluster so that I could lift it up and then tuck my photo in behind it now this worked out really well for me as well because my photo there had a bit of um, sort of negative space in the corner. It was a photo of myself, my sister, our stepdad and our kids. We all went out to celebrate our, my stepdad's birthday. So there was this area in behind us there in the club where we were that you could sort of see ugly carpet and tables and chairs so it worked quite well to cover up that sort of corner of the photo and it gave me a really easy place to anchor my photo to now the other thing i did was with that central area with that circle in the middle i didn't want to leave it white um, it was too stark for me as, as a white circle and I thought that would be the ideal place to lay down some acrylic paint. So I used my Brea, I used that Hydrangea Pink Ceram Coat paint and I just rolled some paint over that inner circle just to give it a bit of extra colour and bring in the pink colour that I wanted to use. Now once I had that paint down the paint dried very very quickly as it does when I use a Brea um, I then went about adding some layers behind where my photo was going to go. So I had some additional uh, pattern paper. I had a paper doily. I had some frayed cotton gauze there. And I was just layering those things behind where my photo was going to sit. Now, going back to the point that I made about the extra things that I used in this, I didn't just use my hip kit as it came because... As it turned out, that hip kit, although it did have this collection in it that does have quite a bit of pastel colours in it, it also had some stronger colours. So there wasn't necessarily all of the embellishments 
that were right for this project. So I did bring in some uh, ephemera from Rosie Studio that tied in really well with the florals that were already printed on the paper. And I did, as I showed you previously, bring in that chipboard sheet from Crate Paper, which was from the Confetti Collection. And the main reason I pulled that in is if you have a look closely at this paper that I'm using as my background sheet, the one from Pink Fresh Studio, it doesn't have a white base. It actually has a cream base. Now, I do prefer my papers usually to have a white base. I find it just gives them a bit of a fresher look and it's also easier to tie in your embellishments. Now, by all means, that doesn't mean that you can't use embellishments that have a, a white core base with papers that do have that cream coloured base, but it makes it a lot easier if you can tie some other cream based things in with it as well. So the ephemera pack that I've got there, as I said, was from Rosie Studio and I just did a quick flick through, pulled out some florals and bits and pieces that sort of tied in with the colour palette that I was working with. So I had that sort of baby blue, that powder blue colour on the background. I had the pink that I had chosen and I also added in some mint green as well. Um, there was also a few little touches of a yellowy, goldy colour in there too, which just brought back to our photo there because there was that yellowish sort of tone going on in the photo. Now, some of these floral pieces that I am working with from the ephemera pack actually have foiling on them. They've got rose gold foiling, uh, which is super pretty, uh, gives a little bit of extra sparkle and interest to the project. Uh, the chipboard pieces as I said, that I brought in from Crate Paper. The reason I chose those was because they do have that cream base. Now, if you've been a fan of Crate Paper for a long time, you'll know that, I don't know whether they still do use a cream base these days. If you know, you can tell me down below. Um, I haven't bought anything Crate Paper in quite a while, but a lot of their older collections were all on this cream coloured base. So I knew if I pulled out that, one of those older chipboard sheets that it would tie in beautifully with this cream based paper from Pink Forest Studio. Uh, the reason I did go for the confetti collection too, obviously the confetti collection was a birthday collection. It was all about celebrating birthdays. So I knew that there would be some icons in there that I could use on this page even though I was going to concentrate on florals I knew that there would be you know some bits and pieces that I could potentially pick off there and add on to this page so you can see that it, the floral clusters here came together really really easily because I already had the one that was printed on the paper that I could work from and just build that out with some extra layers using the rosy studio ephemera and then I had a second cluster up in that top left corner of the photo where I had the doily sitting there that started as the base for that second cluster uh, again I used that um, ephemera pieces from rosy studio now with my title I used a couple of words I had the word it's and time that came from the hip kit and then I just used some thickers, which were those pretty pink, and they had um, little tiny hearts printed on them. You'll see that in the photos, the close-up photos that I put at the end of this video. So I used that for the word party, and then, as I said, the chipboard pieces from the hip kit for It's Time. So it gave me an entire title of It's Party Time, which with very little planning, <laughs> ended up fitting into that space above the photo beautifully. Now, when it came to looking at this chipboard sheet that I've been talking about, the main embellishment that I wanted to use on there was that large mint cover, uh, mint coloured balloon. And that was to tie in with the mint paper that I had added into the layers. And also because I just wanted to make sure that there was enough pastels on this page. Um, I'm sure that indigo blue that I've got on there, which was already pre-printed on the paper, really doesn't tick the pastel box, but I'm hoping Gwen in her infinite wisdom will overlook that one for me and just give me a great big tick because the majority of this page is most definitely pastel shades. 
So I am flicking through um, the ephemera pack from, I'm just having a look in the ephemera pack from the hip kit there and there was nothing that worked with this page that was the right right colours. So I put that one aside. As I said, I'd already picked some things from the chipboard sheet from crepe paper and those Rosie Studio ephemera pieces as well. Now I decided there wasn't quite enough acrylic paint on this project because acrylic paint was my criteria that I had set for this project. So I decided to go back in besides the acrylic paint that I had rolled across the background, I decided to go in. Initially I went in with my brush and a little bit of pink and I just added a little touch of the pink paint that I'd used on the background over those flowers just to help tie the background to the foreground and make sure those pinks kind of matched and then the other thing that I did do was I pulled out some um, white acrylic paint and I just squeezed a little bit on my paint palette there and then I used one of my favorite tools which is my fingers to go and rub a little bit of white paint over some of those areas of the page that were a bit strong so you'll know that I did mention those indigo coloured leaves there and you can see that I've gone in with just a touch of white paint on my fingertip and I've just rubbed it over those leaves just to pull back that strong colour a bit um, and keep it from being too bold and so it would fit better into that pastel theme. So here I am, I have used the last of the acrylic paint that I had on my palette there. I've mixed it up with a little bit of water, grabbed my brush again, and I am splattering the page, which means I am almost done. So you can see how easily this project came together. And I thought I would struggle a lot more than I did, actually. So I've used acrylic paint in three ways. I've rolled it on my paper. I have brushed it onto my embellishments using a brush and my finger. And then I am also using it to splatter on the page. I hope you'll think I've ticked off the pastel colored um, criteria that Gwen set for me. Make sure you head over to Gwen's channel. I'll put a link to hers down below so you can see how Gwen interpreted this criteria pastels being her comfort zone but acrylic paint definitely isn't so let's see what she got up to with it as well thanks so much for watching today i hope you've enjoyed this video if you have any questions leave them down below for me i'll get back to you as soon as possible thank you for watching i will see you next time bye